What's up everybody? The Bearded Prepper here. I come to talk to you today about um, some survival um, tactics if you should run out of preps or if you need to supplement your preps or maybe um, if you just find yourself in any kind of survival situation. You know, uh, this time of year it's getting colder, plants are starting to dry up and die, leaves are falling, at least here where I'm at in the great state of Virginia anyway. And, um, you know, just because the, the summer's over and things are starting to get cooler doesn't mean that you're without hope, especially if you're in need of uh, basic nutrition. You know, um, I do love some, some good meat, but you can get by and you depend more on good, um, healthy vegetation more so than meat at times as far as getting your essential nutrients and um, a lot of the vitamins and minerals that you need to stay healthy and keep your immune system working, things of that nature. So uh, this time of year, a lot of the garden vegetables are gone, but there's still a lot of options out there if you know where to look. And I can guarantee you that most of the time, you don't even have to get more than a few steps from your front door or your back door as the case may be to be able to find them. Um, I'll show you in this video uh, some different segments where I took, really, I only took about um, total, I would say maybe five or 10 minutes from my front door to be able to find everything that I'm going to show you. Um, I literally filmed the remainder of this uh, video and the clips therein um, within a 10 minute period. And um, I could have walked to all these areas um, within five minutes. And, um, you know, this is not even an exhaustive list. This are, this is just the, the, um, food that I found in my property within a few steps of my, my home. If I had really wanted to, to search, I could have found things, um, like rose hips already starting to form this time of year. Um, and a lot of different kinds of, um, edibles that are not even contained in this video. Now, just as a precautionary uh, statement and um, and such as that, you know, don't don't go to the doctor after you ate something poison and say, "Well, the bearded prepper said," because I'm I'm not giving you advice. I'm sharing knowledge um, and letting you see some of the things that I consume in my life, and um, encourage everyone if you're going to seriously um, be dependent upon or could be dependent upon um, wild edibles, then know what you're doing. I, I actually have a, a library of, um, small library of different resources like, uh, this one, which is, uh, wild edibles. Also, um, you know, this one actually has artist illustrations of different things, but, um, like there's a hawthorn berry that grow around here and such as that. Um, but you know, I also really like having something that's like, um, say real photographs. So that's where the internet comes into handy. And actually, if you have access to the internet and a printer with some paper, you can put together your own little uh, wild edibles library for things that are just in your area. Um, because a lot of the things in these guides are going to be more universal and they may not be in your immediate, immediate area. Um, so I encourage you to put together some resources, learn what you're doing, seek the advice of experts, um, maybe find a, a expert in your area or a group in your area, get some resources, put together your own resources, something you can do to educate yourself now before you need it. And, um, you know, maybe you can save some money in the long run. A lot of the plants that you find right around where you live are actually more nutritious, have a higher density of vitamins and minerals, things of that nature, higher nutritional value than anything you can buy in the grocery store. So, Enjoy this video and, um, you know, maybe uh, drop some comments. Let me know some of the resources you use or uh, maybe, uh, you know, some of the methods you take in identifying uh, natural flora and determining whether or not it's edible. So until next time, enjoy the rest of this video. God bless. Hello again, everybody. The Bearded Prepper coming to you. I just wanted to bring you a video just showing you some of the wild edibles that most people have forgotten about that can be used to survive on. Um, usually you can find most of these right around your house. Many people spend 
a lot of money every year trying to eradicate them. But you know, it's good to have some basic knowledge. And again, I'm just sharing my knowledge with you. I'm not advising you or pretending to be an expert, but um, you know, just here around, around my house. This one is not, in my opinion, the tastiest. Um, some people like it. It's called plantain. There's a little patch of them there. They get larger than this too. You can see the vertical um, veins in it and um, the big broad leafy plant. You can chew it up and use it to get rid of the sting on um, some insect bites like uh, wasp stings or stuff like that. It's kind of an astringent. It's edible. You can cook it. You can eat it raw. It grows all around your yard. So, I mean, there you see, most people don't realize this, but your common clover is edible. If you eat too much of it, it'll give you a bellyache though. I think uh, maybe make you kind of gassy, but it is edible. You can eat it raw, you can cook it. And of course the good old dandelion is um, very edible. It has slight bitter taste to it. You can eat the roots, the flowers, the leaves, everything. And um, you know, sometimes it, uh, People don't like it just because of the bitter taste. I kind of like it, but it's kind of like turnip greens to me. And right down in there, you see some, it's called sorrel. Looks kind of like a clover, but not really. It comes in a purple variety, green variety, has little flowers with it. Has a kind of a lemony, zingy taste. My son loves that stuff. Um, I kind of like it too. There's, all of these are very nutritious. And uh, this is in a pot that you'll probably recognize it. It's kind of late in the season. It's a wild violet. They bloom in purple and whitish blue varieties. Typically they grow everywhere. Um, love the shade. The leaves and the flowers are edible and full of vitamin C. So you can see I've only moved, I don't know, maybe three foot in any direction. And I've already shown you, you know, one, two, three, four, five varieties right there. But as you can see, there's clover everywhere in the yard, dandelions everywhere in the yard. The plantains are growing all throughout the yard. Obviously, I haven't poisoned them to try and keep them out. And they're very prominent now that the, you know, the fall foliage is starting to, to show through. But a lot of these nuisance weeds, nuisance weeds that you commonly refer to are um, actually very edible and very nutritious. You know, one thing that I didn't show you, I have some here as well, is the wild onions. They are very edible as well. And uh, while my garden is mostly going to winter, I did put out right at the end some kale. Kale will, especially here in Virginia, where I live, they will make it mostly through the winter. Um, and actually it gets a little bit sweeter after the frost hits it. So very good green vegetable. My lettuce here, it'll last into the winter also. I replanted it just for that purpose. Um, but all around, you can see there's little violets growing everywhere. And uh, over there as well, all around, there's plantains, there's wild onions. You can easily put together a green salad that's very nutritious. As a matter of fact, many of them are more nutritious than um, even what you get in the grocery store. But you can just see everywhere I'm looking, I'm seeing, especially with the ground turning a little bit brown now in the uh, late fall, they really pop out because they hang on to their um, green a lot longer. There's some more plantains with a, a violet right next to it. Um, so there's a little patch of dandelions over here. Coincidentally, dandelions come from an old English word called dent o lion or tooth of lion. If you notice the leaf, regardless of the variety, many of them have that kind of backwards curved tooth look to them, to the leaves. This is one of the ways you can identify them. So that's where the name dandelion came from. So um, I'm going to cut here and, and go to a different place so you don't have to watch me walk anymore, maybe get motion sick. I'm going to show you a few other wild edibles that grow commonly around your house that you could survive on and stay in uh, good health if you had to, if you didn't have access to other nutritious vegetables. Just wanted to show you guys, um, I know I talked about it, but here's a little patch of wild onions. They'll make it through the winter as well. 
You could use it not only for edibles, but to season your food if you had to. I came to a wet area here and you can see a starting of what is commonly called watercress there. Um, there are a lot of other plants growing around here too, you can see what with the uh, wetness and all. So I encourage you to make sure you have positive identification on it. You can see some more coming out down in there and that'll spread and cover this water as long as it stays wet, even through the winter here in Virginia. So that's another wild edible you can look for. And while you're at it, you know, just kind of look around and see what else you can find. Also, um, you know, the, the wet areas are a good place for winter vegetation. And as you can see here, uh, maybe you can't make out, but there's just a super highway of tracks coming through here for deer. So during the appropriate season, you can also procure yourself a big portion of meat that you could cure. I'll show you some ways to cure uh, meat beyond just freezing it for long-term storage as well, or even intermediate storage. So stay tuned. That'll be coming in a future video. Also, um, another thing to keep in mind, there's a baby evergreen pine tree, but uh, these woods are sprinkled with them. Even you can see the dark green up there, even in woods that aren't predominantly pine, you can also find uh, pine trees growing. So the needles um, are full of vitamin C. You can brew a tea out of it, get your vitamin C in an emergency. Also on the bigger trees, the inner layer of bark, it looks almost like a tannish paper that you can peel off the tree after you get the outer bark peeled back, it is um, full of starches that break down into sugars that you can cook. Um, so um, that is also a good survival food if you were in a desperate situation. And year round here you see mushrooms. I don't, that one is not edible. You can see that. Looks rather dangerous with the red. I'm not an expert on fungi, but you know, you could also educate yourself there. That's one thing I'm looking to do in the next year. Sorry for that little glitch. Um, electronics, right? Um, but yeah, in the next year, I'm looking to educate myself on fungi and um, mushrooms and such to at least get some of the basics. I mean, that's an area I've shot away from because it's a very dangerous area. Uh, a lot of wild edibles can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, but to delve into a whole new arena, um, you know, you need to be cautious. But here's another plant that many people may not be familiar with. It has very distinct leaves. This is just a little sprout, but you know, they get up to five, six, seven, eight feet tall. Sometimes it's called a sassafras tree. The leaves kind of have a minty flavor almost. And uh, you've heard of sassafras tea. Well, you can take the roots and leaves and such and make a tea out of them as well. There's a lot of other uses for um, plants like yellow root and uh, sassafras and such in the medicinal world that you, we can delve into at a later time. But that is the sassafras tree. And the leaves are hanging on. It'll eventually fall off. But if you make note of it, mark it, you could also come back and harvest the root if you needed it. And here we have acorns from a white oak tree. Um, as you've heard in other videos, we've had a bumper crop of these this year. Passing off the shed, etc., the barn. But you can actually process these, soak them to get the um, tannins out, and also roast them or dry them, dehydrate them, and make a flower out of them to bake with or to stretch your existing flower. So in bumper crop years, if you have to, use what God gives you. Um, you know, you may not have had a good year in some of your gardening. So maybe you could use some of the natural resources that did really well this year to um, either extend or substitute for your flour or your other um, protein sources or, um, you know, carbohydrate sources. So that's also another option. I couldn't resist adding... Uh, maybe a little repeat on here because I was coming into the office building and look at here There's some sorrel a little violet some more sorrel a Dandelion a big one lots of clover more dandelion more sorrel 
dandelion all the way down. And look at here. That's actually some leftover purslane. There's uh, some more over there. It's already gone to flower, but that's highly nutritious as well. And, uh, just, you know, right here in plain sight. And there's a whole garden full of edibles right back there. So, and, uh, you know, I'll take you and show you one more before I um, stop. There's a lot of repeats. I'm literally walking on food right now. And this is something that's not normally left over this time of year. Hey, there's two for one here. Look at this. That's pokeweed. Um, that's a young one. Now that does have some toxins in it. Um, you would have to, you know, boil that and pour it off twice and replace the water to get the toxins out. But then it's completely edible. Look right there, all that purple stalk with the blueberries. That's the uh, adult version that's almost gone, growing all the way up to there. I grew up eating that. Tastes like turnip greens. Um, and right behind it, right behind the, the pokeweed, is a dock plant. Same thing, it's completely edible. Um, I've read mixed reviews on it as far as eating it without processing it. Um, but myself, if I'm not sure, or I've heard two different stories, I'll take the most, um, I'll take the safest route and I'll boil it and pour it off. But it's completely edible. Surrounded by giant uh, dandelion plants and tall violets. I mean, there's just a smorgasbord of edibles here. So I encourage you to look more into it and um, make sure you're prepared. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I really enjoy identifying wild edibles and, um, you know, consuming what God gives us out in nature, um, you know, as far as nourishment. And honestly, I just hate to see things go to waste. And so many times we, um, we just dispose of the food that's right at our fingertips, the things that God gave us out in nature. So until next time, be prepared. God bless. Seek the wisdom of our Lord and Savior. This is the Bearded Prepper signing off.